Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out my channel. And today I want to talk about a repair on my truck and uh, how it pertains to my RV. This old truck has had everything done to it and I've pretty much shot video on a lot of it. Radius arms, brakes, exhaust headers, tune-ups, ignition boxes, stuff inside, GPS, my winch that's in the back, the hitch that's on the back, just all kinds of things. The problem that I'm having is this truck from the factory is rated to pull about 6,900 pounds. And my camper, when it's fully loaded, which you guys remember that, don't you? Some of you guys subscribe to me because of this thing. If you're still watching my channel, this channel, for RV stuff, you may want to go over to my other channel, RV Daydream. And I'll try to put a link down below here or somewhere on here so you can click that and go to that channel. That's where I'm going to cover most of my RV stuff from now on. It will also cover our transition from uh, homesteaders to full-time RVers. The camper, this is the one that I replaced the roof on on a previous video. Uh, once it's loaded fully, it's about 6,000 pounds if I load it up pretty good. The problem that I have then is I put stuff in the back of this truck also and between the camper being loaded and the truck being loaded up and having that cap on, I go over my GCVW just a little bit. Now the truck still does a good job, but it is a small block and it doesn't have a lot of torque. So I need to address a problem and I'll show you my solution for that. Boom, there's my solution for that. Yep, I got a 97. Now that's two years newer than my old truck and this is the last year for this body style. Uh, F-250 heavy duty, uh, it's got a 410 lock rear end in the back or limited slip, track lock, whatever you want to call it. Most importantly, it has the big block 460 in it and that's what I want to talk to you about. Although these 460s are awesome engines, uh, they do use gas, but they've been around a long time and they're really easy to repair and the repairs have been around for a long time and there's been so much discussion over the years, all the problems that may occur with these trucks that you know everything's been addressed there's a lot of people that are afraid that whenever they type like the transmission or the engine or the truck online in a google search it comes up with all these people talking about problems well you got to realize that this truck was being produced for a lot of years so don't be afraid it's just that there's so many people out there that own these and have had these over the years that they're communicating you know through the social media and, and talking about their problems and how to fix it the great thing about it is you pretty much find answers to everything that you need on Google about this truck in this case I'm gonna talk about a problem that all of them have or well, at some point it seems and that's the manifolds leaking and that's what's going on with this one and I'm talking about the exhaust manifolds I'm gonna show you my solution so let's go look at that real quick I went the cheap route uh, these are only about three hundred and thirty dollars they do not come with the air injection the air injection is on all these later models from like 93 to 97. So if you have a later model, you don't have the little tubes to go to each port. However, there is on the back of the manifold a port that the air injection injects air into the exhaust that way. These headers here are the 18 gauge, which is the thinner, and they're just painted. This paint will flake off. No big deal. I'm going to bolt them on let the paint flake off after about a month's time I'll go ahead and reach in the engine compartment and spray them with VHT because I'm not here for show I'm just here for keeping it from rusting they will also come with a Y pipe because these will not bolt up to your stock Y pipe there isn't any that I could find that were any good that would bolt up to the stock Y pipe there's an O2 sensor bung in the back and there's an EGR port that's right here for this one uh, for this side so that will make your EGR still work and this is an extension tube to help you bolt it up to your stock exhaust it'll be interesting to see how that works out now with headers which I've had tons of them in the past um, you gotta have good header gaskets these gaskets aren't too bad and I might try to run them because I'm going to take these off eventually and go with my other option which I'll talk about now once I work out all the bugs on this thing and that's why I'm putting this exhaust on this inexpensive exhaust there's a few choices uh, you can go with a headman header that's just like this one that is a 14 gauge and ceramic coated that's about five hundred dollars uh, you can go with full length headers and then have exhaust bent so they're six hundred to seven hundred dollars uh, you can do a banks power system those are a thousand to eighteen hundred dollars depending on how far you go with it the best one by far is the banks power system obviously that's why they can charge so much it's a stainless tri-y design uh, they call it a torque tube style header it will increase horsepower and torque 
Uh, it's just a great design. But the Doug Thorley headers, they're a try y also. They'll increase torque. Uh, the Gibsons, uh, I don't know about those so much just because of the coating. Nonetheless, all these options are available to me in the future. What I'm doing right now since I just picked up the truck is trying to shake out all the bugs. And the way I'm going to do that is put these inexpensive headers on, run the truck, check out with towing, check out gas mileage, check out performance, and see if there's anything else I need to address first. Even with me saying I'm going this cheap, inexpensive route, these headers will last me three years. That's pretty decent. And even then, I can pull them off and sell them. I mean, they're not a bad header. It's just in this climate in the Northeast, they're not gonna last very long. Now, if you live in the uh, dry climate, you know, out West, these things would last a really good time. All right, so we had a noise break there. <laughs> that ambulance got closer and you couldn't hear me. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and slip these headers on this truck. Let's hear what it sounds like whenever I bolt them on and how much louder it gets. Now, this is a stock exhaust. I can't run it because I have that exhaust leak underneath the hood. I've already had some stuff loosened up underneath, checking my options out by tightening bolts, things like that. So I can't run it with the stock exhaust. But if you guys have been around a stock truck, I mean, it's quiet. Whenever I tromp the throttle, other than the tapping underneath the hood, all I hear is the air box and the throaty whoo noise. Don't you love that? Whoa. Reminds me of the old quadrabogs and the four barrels of the uh, 70s and 80s, the way they used to sound. Let me go ahead and go to work, get dirty, and I'll come back with that. I want to show you how far I've gotten on this. Now I got the old manifolds off. They look great. Uh, there was just a couple of places that the uh, exhaust gasket had blown out. The exhaust manifold looks relatively flat and it doesn't look like it has any cracks. However, I already have the headers for it and uh, I'm going to install those. Now I've already installed one side and I want to talk to you about that. This side looks like it's going to be pretty straightforward. Nothing crazy, but I want to show you a couple things you got to look at with uh, the header tube. Uh, for the EGR. So back in the back of the engine you can see there's the EGR valve and that's the valve with the plug open that's in the center of your screen right now and it goes to a tube which you can see is kind of shiny back there. Let me zoom in. That shiny tube that has this asbestos sleeving on it and then it goes down to the header and I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it so well but we'll try right there now this tube is brand new my old tube was stripped and uh, would not thread back onto the EGR valve but this is the part I want to talk to you about the most there's a fitting that is on the exhaust manifold from Ford that has a tendency to break and come apart and there's a lot of things online that people talk about as far as how they fixed it or what they do uh, one thing is to go to Ford and locally it's $125 for the fitting, which is absurd. Uh, however, uh, I can find it online as low as $60 and that is still absurd for one fitting. So what I did was take my EGR tube to a local shop that does a little bit of uh, hydraulic fabrication, that kind of a thing, and they cut the end off, just the flare, and took the fitting off that was a 19AN flare style. And then what I did was have him put on a 3 quarter inch NPT fitting and reflare the tube. At that point, I went ahead and picked up a 45 degree elbow at Lowe's for like a dollar and then screwed that in. Now, it's not a flare that's inside there and that's how this seals off. However, what it does do is if you make the flare big enough it catches the threads that are inside that NPT adapter, the three-quarter male to three-quarter female NPT 45 degree, and it'll allow this fitting to snug up against the flare that's inside and seal off the way that it should. Let me show you underneath though and what it looks like. And I'm going to do that with a photo here. Now if you look at this photo, uh, there is a lock washer. Um, you can pick these up at your hardware store and what that lock washer does is allows the pipe fitting to be turned to where it's tight in the header but more importantly uh, to where it's at the right angle for the EGR tube uh, because you may get it to where the thing is kind of tight like in my case 
but not tight enough to seal. Whenever you're doing headers, the best thing you can do is just remove everything out of the way and pull it back. Like I have a bungee cord that's holding the air conditioning line. Uh, of course, all the plugs and plug wires. Uh, I replaced the valve cover gaskets because they were leaking. As you probably seen in that clip, there was a lot of oil that was underneath. Of course, this bracket that's up on top here that has the coil and the tab and tad sensors or the uh, tab and tad uh, valves, actuators, whatever you want to call them they all mount on a bracket that went down to the exhaust manifold and also on the intake manifold one bolt held them and then of course the other side was the exhaust manifold now that the manifold's gone um, you have to refabricate which I did I just made up some bracketry the other thing you have to do is work with your dipstick to make it mount um, which I did that in this case I just kind of straightened it out and it's pretty close to where it needs to be um, it's sealed off really well that's all that really counts now i removed all the air stuff that's on here i will of course retain the egr like i showed you there uh, as far as the air pump i'll eventually take that off for you guys that don't know it's a 47 and a half inch six rib serpentine belt that will bypass that smog pump that shorter belt will allow you to bypass the pump and run just the uh, alternator over to the water pump and then down to the crank. You can see though, everything's uh, pretty straightforward. What I have to do on this side, which I did on the other side, is before you put your headers on, if you had manifolds before, take your exhaust bolt, um, one header bolt basically, and uh, go ahead and try to run it all the way in and all the holes on the head to make sure that they're clear a little bit deeper than what it was originally because on this engine the manifold bolts didn't seem to go in as deep as the header bolts will and there's some areas that are deep inside some of those mounting bolts for the exhaust that are a little bit corroded up so what I do is I try to run a bolt in all the way um, not until it bottoms out just until it is less than the thickness of the flange of the header which is 3 8 in this case and then at that point if I have any that it won't run into all the way what I'm going to do is take a tap and chase those threads on those holes only uh, to see if I can get a little bit more now be careful with your tap because they will break if you try to force it if you haven't used the tap before you just got to be real careful real cautious and real patient and you'll eventually get everything opened up everything's back together and you can see the headers down there let me go ahead and try to zoom in a little bit the paint is already started flaking off of it which is exactly what I want it to do I'm gonna drive it for a couple more days and then I'll spray paint everything uh, with some high temp paint and then on this side too you can see the same thing just real chalky I could rub my hands on that and rub off most of that let's go underneath take a look alright so there's the uh, pipe that comes with the kit and uh, of course it comes over to a Y and there's the Y and then this is where they give you another little section here and that would normally hurt hook to the catalytic converter but I just put a straight piece of pipe in there uh, put a crappy weld on it and then it goes into the stock exhaust so with that said let's go ahead and fire it up and I'll let you hear what it sounds like with uh, headers and uh, no catalytic converter and stock exhaust from that point back. So let's go do that now. So you can hear what it sounds like when it first fires up. I'm going to let it warm up, let everything swell up a little bit more, get the truck to where it's in a more running condition than what it is right now. It's in a ridge condition, and uh, we'll give it a few reps and see what it sounds like at that point. So we got it warmed up. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look or listen what it sounds like now.
that's it. It's all done, and what I'm going to do now is drive the truck, uh, run the crap out of it since I just got it, and see what happens. See uh, as far as anything falling apart, see what it may need. Uh, I can already tell you that uh, the front end's a little flighty, but I think it just needs to be driven. Uh, it doesn't seem like it has a lot of mileage on it since the last two owners, and there was some work that was done to it. Uh, some of the work included ball joints, and I think the ball joints might be a little tight. They need greased uh, because the front end is really tight, and uh, just one of those things. Maybe on down the road, I might spend a thousand dollars that it requires to get some of the uh, Banks long tube headers. But so far, these headers are, are really good. Uh, I had to do a little notching on the frame. I didn't really care for that, like I mentioned before, or I may not have mentioned. I'm not sure, um, but it's the same thing I had to do on my old F-150. So. The headers were nice. Uh, they do a good job. Now, on these headers, I'm going to put a link down below for these specific headers. If you want to uh, pick them up, click the link. Uh, if not, once you're in there, you can look around and see what other options you have. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it, and I hope uh, this uh, makes up your mind one way or the other on what you're going to do with your exhaust and the leak that it has. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye.